So uh, Beth Novick's video sort of tees everything up for me perfectly. Um, because what I'm actually interested in talking about is um, modes of collaboration, um, both sort of um, in the sort of nonprofit, for profit, and also government sectors. You know, we're here talking about um, uh, an interesting uh, uh, sort of sets of set of problems, and uh, you know, everyone here is probably from different uh, walks of life and the like. And uh, my my sort of personal journey, the reason why I'm actually uh, here in uh, Columbia, Missouri, as well as in this room, is because I sort of care about open collaboration. Um, uh, my background is as a software developer, and I uh, currently write software for a journalism nonprofit based here in Columbia, which I uh, actually moved to, uh, into town to do. Um, and uh, so my background, um, you know, I, I came up sort of out of the uh, entrepreneurial world. Um, uh, my, I, uh, I actually have a degree in linguistics, um, but ended up um, after school um, sort of starting up uh, 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 writing websites uh, um, and sort of contributing to the open source software community. And uh, one of those things as somebody who isn't sort of traditionally part of the computer science world is that I was really interested in how can we actually use software to make people's lives better? What, how, uh, how can we use software as a means to other ends to accomplish, um, you know, uh, things that we think would be uh, uh, helpful or, or useful to do? And, and so, you know, um, as, as part of that, you, you kind of start to see um, both how the open source software world works, but sort of how technology and uh, the internet have um, sort of changed everyone's lives, right? I mean, the fact that I now have a device like this, which, you know, uh, 20 years ago was legitimately science fiction, um, you know, says a lot about, you know, where we've come and the, the new sorts of things that we're able to do. And so Beth Novak's um, uh, talk actually, you know, demonstrates some of the ways that say, you know, we, we think about government and um, how uh, we can interact in uh, sort of new ways. And so, you know, um, so, so uh, let me describe for you sort of the model that um, I, I sort of encountered prior to my, my life here in Columbia. So being a software developer and being interested in civics allowed me to do a couple things. Um, you know, uh, there's always more um, work to sort of be done in the software world and people to go out and help. And so the open source software community is one in which, you know, um, we're able to sort of stand on the shoulders of giants and contribute to each other and sort of uh, create a tide that does, in fact, lift all boats. Um, as part of that, on the flip side, um, you know, uh, uh, what do we actually use this software for? The open uh, data movement has really been part of this world where we look at what are the things around us that we're um, uh, that we care about, that we would like to measure, that we'd like to be able to track, and how can we use that to either create a uh, more robust understanding of um, our world, or um, uh, uh, you know, how can we make better decisions based on this information? And as part of all of that, you know, people, um, you know, technology has been able to connect people around the world. Um, and that's allowed us to sort of sympathize and empathize with people who are in more dire straits than we are. And uh, Beth Novak mentioned uh, Ushikidi, for instance, which was a software platform that was created um, in, in response to the earthquake in Haiti. Um, and when, uh, you know, the whole world, particularly the U.S., was watching the devastation that, that took place down uh, in, in Haiti and asked, how can I help? Right. Um, and all of this is really about helping others, right? So how is it that we can do better for you know our fellow man? And I would argue that you know the open source software community, um, government, and the nonprofit sector, as well as portions of the for profit sector, are all about how can we do better, right? And and so you know what I sort of came to realize after my experience um, in sort of the uh, online volunteering world, as well as uh, open source software, is that actually there's a bunch of other modes where all of these pieces come together as well. So now I work with journalists on how um, we can use these sorts of tools in order to um, bring to bear the, the sort of best parts of journalism. How can we explain things to people uh, better? How can we um, give them the tools to be able to understand? Um, what it is that is going on in the community and how can we make clear and more succinct the arguments that are actually um, uh, uh, being had in order to, you know, uh, direct where we want to go as a society, right? But that, that also includes um, uh, 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 models like open government, as Beth uh, Novak's uh, video really describes, right? I mean, why is it just that um, we can build tools to help uh, talk about um, what's going on? Why not actually collectively make decisions together? And so I think that's actually one of the most interesting things about the way that uh, software um, 
uh, and uh, uh, particularly open source has um, sort of changed uh, the, the way that we think about models of collaboration. Um, and particularly to put a fine, finer point on what both Beth Novak said earlier, you know, um, all of the software that I produce now is actually open source. And so what we've done, and uh, the project that I uh, work on is funded by the Knight Foundation, which is a, you know, uh, in turn was originally started by the Knight River newspapers. So this is the for-profit world helping the nonprofit world, helping civics, right? Um, and, you know, the model that we take basically, is we've produced software that uh, we can put up online and anybody else can take, use and uh, adapt as they see fit. They don't have to have our permission to do anything. They can just go onto GitHub, fork it and run with it, right? Which um, leads to some interesting characteristics um, in the way that open source governance works as opposed to um, in other models where you need people's permission to do things, for instance. So uh, for example, the WebKit um, project uh, is a piece of technology that was originally a, um, a uh, open source project that uh, sort of came out of the Linux world and, um, uh, and then was eventually adopted by Apple. Um, Apple uh, then used it for their Safari web browser, which many of you have used if you've got an iOS device. Um, it, uh, it, that is what powers the web browser on your iPhone. And uh, in addition to that, it's actually the same web browser that powers Google. So even um, in the case where two companies may have vastly different goals, they may be deathly enemies at this point, um, they still use the same fundamental technologies that can, can agree to work on a tactical level, even if they do not agree on the high level vision things in a project. So this provides a model where people can collaborate even if um, you know, they may otherwise be at odds, which I think is um, important when you talk about um, the way that government can interact with others or other nonprofits. I'm gonna skip through this really quickly. And so you know, part of this, um, when you talk about data, is how can we actually use uh, uh, these tools and information to be able to improve people's lives? Um, and so, for example, um, San Francisco City, um, with the federal government, put together a project where they were able to do congestion pricing, um, actually use smart meters to calculate um, uh, uh, um, how many meters were open, adjust the prices such that 20% of their meters were always open, right? So this is a way the government can help itself using data. But in addition, they also provide an API for people to build apps on top of this data. Um, uh, the city of Chicago has also put together um, a, uh, a snowplow tracking app. So that way people can, can kind of follow the path that uh, snowplows have actually taken through uh, their city. Now, um, uh, Ushihiki was mentioned earlier, and the reason why I want to point this out is that this is an instance of citizens actually getting together and deciding, we want to take data and make it more useful, right? This is not government actually uh, um, having to uh, decide uh, what to do or how to do it. Um, uh, you know, we as citizens can come together and actually decide what are the things that we need to, what, what is actually important to us in order to be able to accomplish. But this is also information that the U.S. government then used in order to be able to uh, learn more about what was going on on the ground in the aftermath of what was a de devastating um, blow to sort of civil society in Haiti. Um, and, and I should also note that this was actually created, Ushikidi and Crisis Commons were organizations that were started by government employees. These were people who said, we need other mechanisms in order to be able to um, uh, uh, accomplish things, get stuff done. And so, you know, I think that there is certainly a virtuous cycle here in how uh, a lot of this stuff fits together. And so the question is ultimately, how can we um, individually, regardless of what our role is, whether you work in a company, whether you work for a nonprofit and are trying to help people, or whether you're in government, how can you engage others in trying to make where you live a better place? Um, and, you know, hackathons and app contests are certainly one way to do that. But of course, that gives the impression that you have to be a software developer in order to be able to participate. And that's just certainly not the case. There are organizations like Open Data Ottawa, which uh, put out a call to all sorts of people, whether you're a statistician, a librarian, software developer, government employee, and how people can help. And so, for example, the new federal register site was actually created by people who had contributed to um, an app contest and then were later contacted by the government in order to be able to um, contract for them. Uh, Fix My Street is an example of uh, another one of these things where you can actually pull together, you know, people really care about the, uh, the places where they live. How can you get people to um, care, you know, it's much easier to get people to care about, you know, their street or their neighbor's house or whatever, rather than people halfway around the world or, you know, people who live in Montana or whatever. Um, and so you can see, oh, it's a little bit hard to see here, but, you know, there are a lot of people who have contributed to Fix My Street just in the past week. I mean, there's 4, 000, or, you know, 1,400 changes that have been uh, put up in the, the past week. Now, the interesting thing about the snowplow tracker is that actually what turned out not to be very useful. 
um, what people had done was track um, the uh, movements of the snow plows, and uh, that actually doesn't tell you where your street was cleared. So over a single night, um, uh, uh, two uh, programmers got together, actually traced the path of all the snowplow trackers to tell you where um, the streets actually were clear. And that is the important part about open data, right? Um, they were able to provide um, uh, this data um, and provided an app, but they didn't actually, as it turns out, know best what people actually wanted. And being able to provide the building blocks by which other people can actually participate, um, we can actually make our city and wherever it is that we live a better place.